Good morning. I hope everyone is well. I'm so glad you are joining me today to talk about a subject I'm very passionate about, the London Symphony Orchestra. In fact, with me, it's been a love affair with this orchestra since I first heard them live in 1977. If you've heard them live, you'll know what I mean. Before we begin, I request to like, subscribe, and check the notification bell. Also a reminder to join me and my friend Scott Wilson of The Pressing Matters for our Everything Classical Music live stream on this channel every Wednesday at 5 p.m. PST. We are having a lot of fun, and if you can't join us live, you can catch up on the recorded show on the channel. Back to the LSO. This is an orchestra that excites, thrills, heaves with energy, all while playing with exceptional musicality and razor sharp precision, and seemingly in any style and repertoire. Many times their live performances left me and my friends giddy with excitement, literally floating on air as we left the Royal Festival Hall, and long into the after concert curry that usually ended the evening. Rather than give you a play-by-play -play of the orchestra's 120-year history, I'm going to point out my favorite recordings on vinyl, CD, and streaming with some fabulous conductors, so hopefully you'll hear some of how I describe their live concerts. I wish I could get into the stories. There are some incredible, legendary, hilarious stories. Enough said that the Hair on Fire, Seat of Your Pants performances, these came by way of very strong, interesting personalities. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> and as the orchestra is self-governing, they don't usually put up with any conductor shenanigans. The LSO made its first recording under the great Nickish in 1913 at the new purpose-built Hayes Studios. Repertoire included Beethoven Egmont Overture, Webern Oberon Overture, and Liszt's Hungarian Rhapsody in F minor. And since that first recording, the LSO archivist suggests 2,700 recordings I'll link the PDF below. It's 900 pages in very small type. Someone put a lot of work into this PDF. The LSO has been top of the heap in London since the early 60s. Before then, other wonderful London orchestras like Walter Legg's Philharmonia and Sir Thomas Beecham's Royal Philharmonic had all the money and pick of the top players. The LSO, which has always carried itself above most, did not like playing second fiddle, pardon the pun, and changed their funding pay model in the late 50s and began making significant hires, including legends like Barry Tuckwell on horn, Hugh Maguire as leader, Gervais de Peyer on clarinet, and Dennis Wick on trombone. These leading players, including later Jimmy Galway and William Bennett on flute, raised the level to not only the best in London, but equal to those in Berlin, Vienna, Chicago, and Amsterdam. In fact, those four orchestras and the LSO have considered the best in the world for some time. Even today, when hiring, the LSO never let a superstar youngster go by. The usual route, superstar in school, national youth orchestra principal, winner or finalist of the BBC Young Musician of the Year, then offer them a job. The finest crop of the past 20 years all got posted in the LSO, including David Pyatt Horn, Adam Walker on flute, and Phil Cobb on trumpet, all barely in their 20s. And then there's Peter Moore on trombone. He got appointed when he was 18. Standards do waver at times. Players leave, the loss of exclusive engagements like Salzburg and the Edinburgh Festivals and the like. So superb orchestras such as the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra, it's my second favorite orchestra, Philly, Boston and Cleveland, not forgetting the Gewandhaus and Dresden Staatskapelle, jump into the illustrious five at times. Let me know your favorite orchestras in the comments below. What I love particularly about the LSO is how adaptable they are. For example, the LSO can record Star Wars in the morning, then break your heart in world-class Brooklyn or Mahler in the evening during their subscription concerts. I'll link a great video below of the LSO's superb principal flute, Gareth Davis, called Life in a Day, to see how hard they work and in what conditions. My admiration for them knows no bounds. So to the good stuff. We'll do streaming, CDs, and then vinyl. I'll tell you about the recordings, the location, engineer, and maybe some stories as we go along. With 2,700 recordings, we could be here all day. If I miss your favorites, please put them in the comments below. Thanks. Also, I would consider each of these choices perfect trifectas, interpretation, performance, and recording. 
Personally, I wish they were all AAA on vinyl pressed by Decca, EMI, etc. Sadly, no. But that doesn't mean the LSO sound any worse for it. In fact, most of the great Abado recordings are digital and DG to boot. Even Previn went digital. But not to worry, I'm going to give you some great choices on both streaming and CD. The vinyl I'm going to show you, well, to me, their musical Nirvana. Here we go. First up, a lovely performance of Brookness Symphony No. 7 by Sir Simon Rattle with the LSO. It's fairly recent. Uh, I think it's 2023. One thing you must remember on these LSO live recordings, they're recorded in the Barbican. Not a great recording space. The Royal Festival Hall in London is even worse. But the, the engineers uh, at LSO Live do a nice job in uh, post, so it's not too bad. But this is such a beautiful performance, I think you'll enjoy it. And it's high res, 24-bit, 192 kilohertz stereo. This is also a recent recording, 2021. Uh, this is um, Vaughan Williams Symphonies number no. 4 and 6, and they're wonderful performance by the LSO, conducted by their new music director, Sir Antonio Papano. Antonio Papano, a uh, very fine conductor. The playing on this recording is very good, and the recording is very good. This is 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. I put this recording up here because I had it on Dyna Groove and the pressing was not good on the vinyl, but it's one of Andre Previn's most famous recordings, probably his most famous recording, with his LSO. This is Walton's Symphony Number no. 1, and a magnificent work. If you don't know it, I think the streaming will sound better. It's not uh, high res. Um, it's uh, just standard CD quality, but it'll be very good. It's a magnificent symphony, and I think you'll enjoy it. The performance is second to none. You know, this is one of those recordings that Previn ruined it for everybody because uh, the recording itself, the pressing is not that great, but the playing is so amazing that uh, everybody else who followed kind of is in this recording's shadow. There's one great thing about streaming. There's so much to stream and there's so many great performances, especially by the LSO. And this Decca box of incredible performances of the Dvorak Complete Symphonies by Istvan Cortez. Uh, from the early 60s, this is just after the LSO made all those highs I was telling you about. And the recordings from Decca, I've got a couple on vinyl. They're, they're tremendous. But it's, it's, a, it's a good, um, a good uh, remaster, 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. Uh, it's nine symphonies. You can sit and listen to Dvorak all day. They're wonderful. This is another box set. This is a little bit before then. This is also, I think, from the 60s. I'll put but this is the Tchaikovsky Symphonies and Manfred uh, with Igor Markovich, a very underrated conductor. He did some incredible work with the LSO and other orchestras, a Russian conductor, um, could not speak English, spoke Russian and French, that was it. I mean, they recorded the Tchaikovsky symphonies many times. The Durati set is fantastic as well, but this is in 24-bit, 96 kilohertz, it's very well done. And now to CDs. The box set is the Abado Deutsche Grammophon box set. Abado's tenure with the LSO was magnificent. Many people consider his recordings with the LSO his very best. And they're all included here, and I think it's, you can get them pretty cheap on on, on um, Amazon. Less than $200, but it's uh, very worthy of your dollars. Just after Abado uh, was Michael Tilson Thomas, and he did some good recordings uh, with uh, the LSO. There's a Prokofiev Piano Concertos 1 and 2 with Vladimir Feltzman, which is very good. You should search that out. Very, very good. But his Mars 7 on RCA is absolutely magnificent. I think it's one of Tilson Thomas's best recordings. The brass playing in this is absolutely mesmerizing. I think you'll really enjoy it. That's, it's a fantastic performance and a very good recording. This one is absolutely Abado's greatest recording. At least Abado thought so. I'm hoping the Emil Berliner team get a hold of this and reissue it on uh, George Graham from the, the original series vinyl because it's amazing. This is Bella Bartok's The Miraculous Mandarin in a vicious, brilliant, I would say perfect performance uh, by Abado and the LSO. My God, the power of that orchestra. And finally, two Andre Previn recordings, Debussy La Mer and Three Nocturnes, absolutely beautiful. The LSO's playing is magnificent here and Previn's interpretation is beautiful. And then the very first EMI digital recording and the reviews of this recording when it came out were just amazing. The typical Brits going way over the top, but it was a lovely recording and it did kind of highlight what was good about digital. This is Debussy Image, and it's got um, Gilles Iberia and Ronde de Printemps and a beautiful prelude à la Clavier d'une 
And now to the vinyl. Now, some of these I've, I've shown a lot on this channel, so I'm just going to show them briefly. These are my favorite LSO recordings on vinyl. This is an Indianapolis 4S 4S um, stamper. Shares that with Monteur, who conducted them as music director when he was in his 80s. It's a lovely cover. That's a beautiful performance. One of the absolute best Shares arts. This is a lovely original EMI. Postage stamp. Rachmaninoff Second Symphony. Previn owns this piece and the LSO play it absolutely beautifully. And the EMI recording is equal of it. This is an interesting one. I'm not a lover of Everest recordings, uh, but, but uh, Classic Records Reissues, Bernie Grumman has done some beautiful uh, uh, remasterings. This is Prokofiev Symphony Number no. 5 with Sergeant conducting the LSO. You used to call Sergeant Flash Harry. Not a nice man. Lots of stories there, but uh, all I can tell you is when I first went to London, before I went to Trinity, I had some lessons with a gentleman named Andrew Solomon, wonderful flute player and wonderful teacher. And he was second in the BBC Symphony under Sergeant. And he would tell me stories of Sergeant picking on a certain player and having the player play a solo part, very difficult, over and over and over again in front of the orchestra by himself or herself until the player cracked and really kind of got off on it. Not a nice person, but this is a good performance. I love this record. I've shown it lots. This is also an Everest, but this is again, uh, Bernie Grumman. This is Corroboree by George Antill. Uh, it's kind of like an indigenous rite of spring, Australian uh, ballet. It's also got uh, Hinnestera on Parambi. Wonderful. This is Eugene Goosens conducting the London Symphony. Boy, Eugene Goosens, if you Google Eugene Goosens, how his career ended, you'll figure out what happened. <laughs> kind of a, um, not a pleasant ending to a pretty stellar career, but um, this is a wonderful piece of music. If you don't have this, this is the classic records uh, reissue. It was on a shelf for 30 years and sealed. So when I opened it, it's pretty dished, unfortunately, but it's an incredible recording. This is the first one of the ORG that I'm going to show you, the double uh, London 45s. See, done by Bernie Grunman, but these were done by ORG. Uh, they're very expensive on Discogs to get them sealed, about $200. This is the Scotch Symphony. It's incorrect. It's the Scottish Symphony. No such thing as Scotch. Scotch is a drink. Um, LSO, Peter Mark, Swiss conductor. He did some knockout Mendelssohn. And that's a beautiful performance and a beautiful recording. Another ORG. This is a very famous London Symphony recording, Espana, by the great Atois for Argenta. Again, London, double... 45. This one cost me about $240 sealed on Discogs and worth every penny. Another ORG. This is Monteur's fabulous Daphne and Chloe. I did a whole, I did lots of uh, videos with these, featuring these, so I'm just going to go through them briefly. It's wonderful. Kingsway Hall. Can you imagine an orchestra doing all these varied pieces? at such high standards over so long. Amazing. One of my favorite classic records reissues. This needs to be uh, repressed. Uh, hasn't been done for quite a while. This is Shostakovich Symphony Number no. 1 that he wrote when he was 17 years old as his graduation piece from the St. Petersburg Conservatory. I also talked about this lots of times. It's got the Kingsway rumble in it, the subway going underneath, lots of it. Um, but the LSO with Martinon, underrated conductor, the LSO's performance of this is absolutely astounding. And the recording is the equal of it. And the pressing is very good too, the um, the classic records. Um, I'm not sure how if that's still available, but uh, it's worth getting. Great piece as well. Can't believe a 17 year old wrote that. The LSO getting pretty serious here with Marla Symphony Number no. 9, his greatest work, along with Das Lieder von der Erde. This is with George Schulte. This is a, a, an original Decker. Not sure. Yes, yeah, the purple label, ED3 probably narrow band. It's very very good. But the the uh, Schulte did all the stuff again with the Chicago Symphony later, and much of it was not as good. Um, his Mahler Nine is magnificent. Highly recommended. You can get this pretty cheap on Discogs. Harry Pearson considered this the greatest recording of all time for some time. This is the Mercury um, uh, Prokofiev of Love for Three Oranges and the Scythian Suite. Conducted by Antal Torati. Just incredible power from Watford Town Hall. Three microphones, the orchestra on the stage, 
playing out into the into the uh, auditorium, three microphones hanging down with Bob Fine and Roma Kozart Fine. It's just an incredible recording. The power of that recording, uh, very, very special. And that's easy, easily available in the Classic Records reissue. This is the famous Witches Brew played by the new Symphony Orchestra of London, that's the LSO, with Sandy Gibson, conductor, very good Scottish conductor. There's the Sexy Witch on the cover, one of my favorite covers. And um, this is the um, Bernie Grunman cut on Classic Records. And I think it's been redone uh, with Ryan Smith. And this is the one uh, that Steve Hoffman in the Hoffman Forums says, it sounds like an ice pick is playing the record. Steve, I think the world of you, and I really listen to a lot of things you say, but I think you're completely wrong on this. I think this is system dependent. It is a little bit on the bright side, just a tiny, tiny bit, but it's so bloody dynamic and the orchestral playing is amazing. It's got great, a great repertoire on it. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Uh, Overture to Tam O'Shanter, which I've played a couple of times by Malcolm Mondo, lots of fun. No and Pictures, Nano on Bear Mountain. Dance Macabre, beautiful Dance Macabre, which is right from Hansel and Gretel, and List Mephisto Waltz. That's the, the uh, classic records, Bernie Grumman. It's not cheap to find it. <clears throat> uh, worth every penny. Famous record for a reason. And finally, my final two and favorite recordings. This is Dorati's Firebird. I talked about it lots already on Mercury, again from Watford Town Hall. Three microphones hanging over the front. It's perfection. I've never heard playing like it. The Firebird um, during Cache's dance and uh, oh, actually all the way through it, the solo, the quiet solo parts, the string playing. Uh, Dennis Wick's trombone playing is absolutely mesmerizing, as is everybody's playing. It's just there's no weaknesses on this record. Uh, Dorati, man, <laughs> he did some fantastic records with the LSO. This is, this, this is number one, I think. And this is the classic records reissue of the label. And this is probably my favorite LSO recording. I got this, this is the Bernie Grumman cut, the ORG double 45, A Midsummer Night's Dream by Mendelssohn. Absolutely glorious, all the music, not just the Nocturne and the Scherzo and the Overture. Mendelssohn wrote the Overture when he was 17. It's just remarkable that a 17 year old could do that. Bernie Grumman's uh, remastering of this is very, very special. He gets the layering of the orchestra so beautiful in, in Kingsway Hall. Anyway, there it is. Uh, my favorite orchestra is the world's most, it's the world's most recorded orchestra and for a reason. First of all, they sight read everything, just about 99%. So they don't cost recording companies a lot of money. And they've maintained their standards since they did all that uh, rehiring in the 60s, early 60s. Uh, they've maintained their standards for almost uh, 65 years. So um, long way they continue and the other London orchestras as well. There are four other orchestras that are very fine, but the LSO, I just think, has a little bit of swagger, a little bit of style that eludes most orchestras, in fact. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.